morning and thank you for tuning in to Y254 TV. Why in the morning is the show. My name is Deva Hillary. Thank you so much for being a part of us. Now, uh, public, the public has been given uh, one week to respond to whether the students should be going back to school or they shouldn't. I'm speaking to Job Mogira. He's a researcher and we want to know is it okay to go back to school right now or we'll be competing with other nations? And what happens if we go back to school right now? Good morning. Good morning, Hilary. How are you? I'm very well. How have you been? I've been good. Yeah, I thank God. All right. Now, um, should we be going back to school at such a time? Uh, such a time? No. Eventually, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the reason I'm saying this is... Uh, you know, we should first of, uh, first of all ask ourselves a few questions. I like what the CS has done mm -hmm. to let Kenyans express their views. And so the first question should be, why did we close our schools? Mm -hmm. Now, if we have five reasons why we closed our schools, have we addressed those reasons so that now we, we think of reopening the schools? Mm -hmm. If we have addressed according to the ministry which issued the directive to close the schools mm -hmm. then it's okay we we reopen schools now if we've not addressed the reasons as to why we closed schools mm -hmm. then we should not think of uh, reopening schools uh, because uh, you see there are so many factors schools uh, if you remember and i am not saying that there are some less essential services Mm -hmm. When the devolution act was being passed and such, or the, the, the system of devolution was being designed in Kenya, mm -hmm. we didn't devolve education mm -hmm. because we thought, or because it actually is a very big uh, sector in this country. So anything to go with the opening of schools, resuming studies and such, mm -hmm. is not the right thing to do right now. Uh, when uh, <coughs> I decided to do a little research mm -hmm. from my own circles mm -hmm. about these reopening schools and that's why i have my phone today mm -hmm. because i don't want to speak from the blues i mm -hmm. don't want to do any guesswork mm -hmm. i want to let the youth and especially those maybe youthful parents mm -hmm. hear what their fellow youthful parents mm -hmm. are saying about reopening of schools i talked to around 70 people Wow, that's a good number. Yeah, using my, in the last, in the last <laughs> hours. Fellow Kenyans. Yeah, fellow Kenyans I talked to, over 70 uh -huh. fellow Kenyans. Right. And uh, out of the 70, 67 mm -hmm. are of the opinion we should not reopen schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three of them, mm -hmm. and which I like their perspectives, mm -hmm. are of the opinion we open schools but they have given several conditions mm -hmm. which we should discuss of course at some point mm -hmm. and the reason why uh, number one mm -hmm. uh, i'm saying that uh, we should not reopen schools right what we are a very simple question kanisa do we want to experiment mm -hmm. with our kids Right. Who you know, even uh, one of my friends says, uh, I've been trying to control 10 kids in, in the flats where I stay. It's okay. difficult. Even telling my own kid not to move out mm -hmm. is a bit difficult. How will the teachers mm -hmm. control? Social distancing. Uh, yeah, the physical distance and the social distance. How will the teachers handle that? Mm -hmm. uh, remember here, we are talking about, uh, you know, the, I hear there was a mass recruitment of teachers in 1989 mm -hmm. and uh, 1990 when the curriculum changed from whatever it was to 844. Right. Now those teachers mm -hmm. are retiring this year, some retired next uh, last year and others will retire next year. So you are talking about a big percentage of teachers who are over 50 years. Now we want to expose them because they are teachers and yet in other sectors we are saying uh, mm -hmm. If you're over 50, do okay. not come to work. Right. Uh, you remember the government had said uh, uh, work from home, uh, unless, uh, except for senior officials. But even for those senior officials, if you are over 60, mm -hmm. of course, with the exception of politicians, politicians mm -hmm. do not retire. Mm -hmm. uh, work from mm -hmm. home. 
Right. Why do we want the teachers mm-hmm. to work from school? Yet most of them, not most, but several of them mm-hmm. are over 50 years. And very vulnerable. Well, yeah, we are risking mm-hmm. their lives. Will we afford to give them a, a health allowance? Mm-hmm. Or maybe a risk, health risk allowance? Right. Uh, we will not be at that position. Now, the kids themselves, mm-hmm. some parents do not have an HIF. Then you watch Ilia Watoto Waende Shule. These are topics that is close to mm-hmm. so many people. Mm-hmm. And even what I've seen from uh, the small research I did, some parents are categorical. Even if we reopen schools, mm-hmm. my kids are not going. Let others go. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, then, then I, will, uh, I will decide whether my kid is going. Jana, uh, I know uh, the reason else I'm saying the topic is dear to so many parents is even my old daughter. Alienda shule ikaka ni kama alienda shule after two months ikaisha. Now she doesn't <laughs> understand. There's a condition. Uh, even uh, yesterday she was asking me that you ukienda tunafungua shule ama kesho asubuhi tunaenda nisha shule. Nikamwambia tuendi and I know she's she's watching. So uh, I will tell her later mm-hmm. why we had to close schools and why uh, the schools cannot be reopened at this point mm-hmm. but eventually we will have to reopen schools but currently we are not ready and the reason i'm insisting we are not ready is mm-hmm. i believe the many reasons that made us close schools mm-hmm. have not been addressed right are we at a position to contain coronavirus as a country if mm-hmm. not then we should not experiment with our kids all right, uh, Cyrus, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, apparently, we had to begin without you, but we haven't moved so far. Uh, Sarah Ruto's uh, task force has given the public one week to respond to whether we should be reopening our schools or not. There are so many things to put into consideration as far as COVID-19 is concerned. You remember in March uh, 12th, when the first case was reported, on the 17th, the schools were closed. This, the pupils and the students have been back home, learning from home, of which there has been questions on how will we test them come the end of the year as our norm during the exams. These people, uh, not everyone can access education or the platform that has been uh, given by the government through the TV and the radio and other smartphone for the sake of uh, uh, the, the well of families. But now um, we are asking if we reopened our schools today, are we competing with maybe the dollar nations and are we, by the way, in a good state to reopen our schools at such a time? Uh, thank you, I'm sorry for being late. It's, okay. uh, it's not, if we say we are competing with the dollar nation, then we shall be making a fool of ourselves because most of the dollar nations have not opened the schools. They are still at home, okay? Even you, you saw the other day, it's only Bundesliga that started. Maybe they have put their mechanisms in place eh, to manage the players. Now, the government on one side has always failed, and I've always said that, and I will keep on saying that. When there was a free education, they allowed pupils and students to go to school without considering the infrastructure. A school, that a class that should hold 25 pupils per teacher is holding 90 pupils per teacher. Such an environment, we don't need to open schools at the moment. Mm-hmm. Because one, our infrastructure is very poor. Okay? Mm-hmm. Looking at this, the classes, the congestion of classes, and how this, dece- or how this uh, thing called COVID-19 spreads, it won't allow. Mm-hmm. So it will be a risk to our pupils. Then, a risk to our pupils is a risk to a parent. Because one, you don't know where this child is coming from. Okay? Then you don't know what infection this child may carry back home or to school. So this is a very risky thing that you should not even think about at the moment. For private schools, you can say they are a bit far much better than the public schools. So for private schools, maybe... We can look at it in one way or the other, mm-hmm. okay? But for public schools, it is a risk that we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are trying to create for our own children and our own sake. Because now, if the disease spreads the way it's spreading, mm-hmm. then with 
uh, with regards to the congestion that is always in our public schools, mm -hmm. then it's a mess. Now, when <laughs> we come back to the examinations, I don't know uh, why is it that uh, we should we should force our 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 our, our students and mm -hmm. our pupils to do the exams. Okay. Yet they are not in school. There's no pupil mm -hmm. or student who is learning at home right now. Okay. Let us just be realistic because everybody's mind has switched off. Mm -hmm. For the first two weeks after the closure of schools, fine, everybody was in the books. But right now, mm -hmm. let me tell you the truth, the mind has switched off. Okay. Uh, I, would, I would like to cut you short. Hold on to that thought. Okay. Uh, we take a very quick short break and then we'll be back. Keep it Y254 in the morning. And thank you for keeping us company. We are talking about the reopening of schools, and of course, we need your uh, opinion uh, in regards to how do you feel about reopening the schools. There has been a ta task force that has been uh, put in place to look into the views of Kenyans and the public at large. To in one week's time, we will know whether the public agreed to schools being reopened or not. And that's the discussion we're having here this morning. I'm speaking to political analyst Silas Litsua and uh, researcher and research analyst Job Mugira. Uh, thank you so much. Now, before we went for uh, on that break, say as you are saying, our schools are overpopulated. Yes. And that's a big concern. Yes. It has been there over time. You have said uh, the private schools could be better off. But of course, remember, these are people and uh, you do not know where they are coming from oh. or where they, what they will go back home with. Mm -hmm. Now, other than the numbers, what would be another problem? Another problem that we have is uh, is that is is the teacher-student ratio or the teacher-people ratio? That's one of the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when you look at the teacher-people ratio to public schools, it doesn't match. Okay, population is high from the pupils. The teachers are, 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 are just a number. Okay, a very little number of teachers that we have in the in the in the, in the schools. Now, the the the. The Ministry of Education, or the government, uh, in the other words, uh, has not invested much on education, okay? And this is where we have a bigger problem. Because if the government could have invested much in these teachers, then we could not be having a problem. Then another issue is uh, when we talk of infrastructure. We have like uh, an area where uh, school, we have only two public schools. Uh, those are primary schools. This, uh, let me say, an area like, the, look, look at Kasarani constituency. I've only seen two public schools. These are primary schools. One down Wiki, uh, the other one is Dominic Primary School, and then another one at Kasarani Primary. These are the only two public schools. Uh, there are only three, actually. And look at such an area, okay? And the population within that area is bigger. So what do we need to do in, this, in such instances? These are some of the things that the government should address. Okay. Both the county government and the national government. Remember, we have uh, monies that are always given out to the national government, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you talk of CDF that is supposed to cater for such a things. Talk of uh, the, the, the county governments also. They also take part in, ed in, in education, okay? So these are some of the things that we need to sit down and look into. How okay. are we going to manage these things? What if this situation may repeat itself some years to come? Are we going to handle this situation the same way? And remember, our population always is growing. It is not that it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is reducing. It All is right. always growing, okay? okay? Yeah. Double. When we will go to census 2019, the population will have doubled. Mm -hmm. Remember the population we had uh, in 2009, we had around uh, 35 million people. Mm -hmm. Right now we have uh, 50 million people. 
come 2019, we'll be having almost 60, 65 million people. So this is some of the things that we need to sit down and look into. So how are we going to manage these situations? All right. Okay? Yes. All right. Now, uh, there has been a concern of uh, the teachers who uh, will be handling our kids. Of course, uh, the number or the, the, the population is one of the factors. But look at these uh, teachers who will be handling the, stu the pupils and the students at, uh, at the end of the day. How, how are we ensuring they are safe or they have protected themselves? We are using masks out here. Uh, for the sake of our medical uh, health workers, we're having them having PPEs. How about the teachers? If they're going to have our students in school, how should they be? Well, I, I think uh, on, on protecting our teachers, you know the teacher needs to be protected same way as the nurse. <laughs> because at the point we are allowing students to go back to school, we do not know whether they have the virus or they do not have. And uh, just like the way we are protecting even ourselves on the streets, the teachers should be protected. And I want to, 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 to pose a very simple question. The government said they are distributing uh, masks. The government said they are distributing sanitizers. How many ordinary Kenyans? Cyrus, why are you going to get a sanitizer? Why are you going to get a So we are talking about eh, giving all the teachers in this country uh, sanitizers. We are talking about giving these uh, teachers uh, personal protective equipment. Which is not even enough, which for, is the not even enough for the nurses. Mm -hmm. So do we give priority to the nurses uh, or to the teachers? Which means again now we should not allow these teachers to go back to school. Look here Hillary. Mm -hmm. uh, these teachers will have an additional JD, which I believe is a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. If you want the students to remain safe in schools, eh, mm -hmm. we need a teacher to be standing somewhere, one teacher maybe at the gate, to ensure that all the kids sanitize. <laughs> we need another teacher mm -hmm. to be in the classroom to ensure that all the students observe the physical distance. Mm -hmm. And again, we need another teacher during break time to ensure that all the students observe the social distance. No now, we need, we need another <laughs> teacher to ensure that whenever a kid goes to the washrooms, mm -hmm. the kid uses the washrooms, then someone comes, sanitizes and washes that place before the next kid uses that uh, washroom. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, if you have like 50 kids in school and each kid is taking three minutes in the washrooms, then the washing and the disinfection uh, takes uh, two minutes, that is five minutes per kid. Eh? Mm -hmm. You will need to 50 minutes. <laughs> To allow this compared to during uh, before the virus, <laughs> when uh, three, four, five boys could line up hey, you uh, yeah. And, yeah, and sort themselves out. Mm -hmm. Then uh, another thing, and uh, where I want to differ slightly with uh, my friend Cyrus on private schools. Mm -hmm. You know, private schools are economic entities. They are there to make profit. I believe, and I agree with you. They have the some of them have the, most of them, in fact, have the infrastructure. But now the critical infrastructure they will miss again is the teachers. Mm -hmm. Because I know probably what you're thinking is uh, maybe they could tell their class 8, you can share uh, block A and block B so that you observe the social distance. Remember now if we put 50 students in three classes, we will need three teachers. This is an investor who has employed one teacher to take care of 50 students. Mm -hmm. Now you need three teachers to take care of the 50 students you are not increasing school fees. So you see, the teachers again will become a, a big mess, like affording the teachers mm -hmm. will be difficult for these people. Mm -hmm. Then uh, if you look at the political arena, the development arena, teachers always feel they are discriminating on so many issues. Uh, you will hear a teacher arguing, uh, which is uh, debatable, that uh, we teach pilots, we teach doctors, but these people go and earn, <laughs> even engineers, <laughs> higher than us. And now again, eh, you've told, as I said, you've told engineers to work from home. Pilots uh, are sleeping at home because mm -hmm. uh, flights have been cancelled. Eh? Actually, I saw, I, I, I saw a meme, allow me to cut you short. I saw a meme saying, be humble, the pilots are home. Now the what do the wako so, Rudy Jones, mm -hmm. akafunze pilots, 
ama pilots to be mm-hmm. ni hali the pilots are now relaxing or not relaxing uh, per se because no one is relaxing eh? mm-hmm. but the pilots are at home mm-hmm. they are keeping safe they are staying home mm-hmm. ile kazi iko kwa kutunza mtoto mmoja mm-hmm. is a lot of work Very so true. before we tell the teachers to go back to class i believe since the uh, free primary education we are not able to match at the number of teachers to the number of students mm-hmm. currently we are not able again to match even uh, with the free secondary education we are not able to match the numbers mm-hmm. so do we want to kill our teachers uh, personally and even from the so many opinions i got from my small survey mm-hmm. no one wants teachers to be back in school right yeah okay as i said there there's another issue of time mm-hmm. in regards to the exam time mm-hmm. now if the students or, or if the schools are reopened today mm-hmm. will the learners be subjected in uh, because of time as in so much workload or trying to cover the syllabus there are rumors uh, the the exam will cover what they have learned so far but if they go back today do you think they will be subjected to more learning more learning and the homework and you know uh, i'm sure you are in school sometimes and you know mm. it comes sometimes <laughs> now it comes to homework and the uh, assignments talking to backlog of students and uh, pupils who are supposed to sit for examination my question uh, i keep on asking is why do we have to hurry them do the exam what for one where are they going to go after that will this exam be credible okay will, will it be under pressure are we going to put subject these pupils and students on pressure just to do the exam for the sake of compliance okay no what we should do is let us sit down okay have a dialogue with ourselves have a dialogue with the stakeholders okay what do we need to do because before the exam comes a syllabus has to be covered and remember our exams are never set in kenya they are always set in i think britain okay when i exam setting will continue okay the uk best whatever that's keep on setting the exam will continue setting the exam okay? okay so we don't set the exam the exam is not set in kenya it is set outside the country okay in the uk so why do we have to pile pressure on our pupils to do the exam yet we can sit down look at the situation okay after we've managed the situation then we can say this is now how we are going to handle our students Okay as my brother has said we need a lot the government said it's going to distribute the mask the sanitizer it has not done so okay uh, we've seen some other things the county government has placed in stages uh, for sanitizing these things even lack water leave alone even the masks and sanitizers the the, the the county government of Nairobi the Nairobi the Nairobians don't have water even to the hands the pipes are dry the taps are and dry the, the same thing okay? could maybe escalate to even our schools yes we don't have water so if you are telling us uh, uh, to take students back to school w- what are they going to use for water okay because this is this water is very essential in 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 washing the hands and doing other things it's very essential even in drinking so if our homes don't have waters do will our schools have waters then where are we going to get this water from so okay. these are some of the things that we need to look into right. even the police the officers are also who are also managing us they don't have these facilities okay they need to buy them so the government has ha, ha, need to step up on how to protect its own people mm-hmm. because these are the people who pay taxes these are the people who make the economy grow and without these people then the economy of this country will not go anywhere we, we won't grow all right uh, job i would like you to to respond to the same and then uh, there's an issue of uh, most of the people went home with an unpaid uh, leave others lost their jobs they do not know where they will uh, begin come the end of covid-19 school fee we have parents who will be burdened by the school fee and this parent what they would have saved for the school fee is what they are eating now what will happen i think uh, that one is as simple as abcd and if the government really cares eh, let it open the restaurants 
so that people can go work in the restaurants, get their pay, then pay school fees. Let it open uh, the boundaries so that people, and of course when I say let it open restaurants and boundaries, I don't mean we ignore the conditions, I mean like the priorities. Mm -hmm. So when we open the boundaries, the cessation thing, so that people who are farmers in Kinango can still go to Kinango and farm, those who are farming in Morana can still go there, those who used to get Mira from Meru can still go get their Mira, mm -hmm. those who used to work maybe conductors, drivers, in those long distance trucks and uh, other transport vehicles, mm -hmm. first of all should resume. We should resume normalcy. Eh? When I and I said I don't like saying normalcy eh? because nothing will be normal after Corona. <laughs> what I mean is we should resume our businesses fast. Mm -hmm. We open every mm -hmm. uh, strike some matter churches if we because some people eat from the church. Exactly. Pastors, church admins, mm -hmm. uh, watchmen who guard the churches, and all of them eat from yeah. churches. Eh? Mm -hmm. And so many other, like uh, churches hire so many other things from other business Very and service true. providers. Mm -hmm. So once the economy is set to resume and to run, mm -hmm. then we know now, myself, I go to m back to my hustle, mm -hmm. raise money, then I go and pay school fees. But if you tell me now to pay school fees before you allow me to go back to my hustle, what does that mean? Remember, schools need resources to, to, to run. <laughs> and the government, uh, sometimes, you know, when I found a poor shop, Kidogo, Ile pesa ilikuwa yenda kwa masomo second term. Mm -hmm. Wacha tutumia kupigana na si ni free education na kuna pesa zilifaa ziende kwa masomo. Mm -hmm. In the free education sector. Mm -hmm. Let the government use that money now mm -hmm. to fight coronavirus first. And when they are done fighting coronavirus, <coughs> maybe the money for the next, uh, for the next term mm -hmm. will be used to fund uh, the education. Because again, as I said, eventually we will have to reopen schools. WHO said uh, this virus is here to stay. And even the influenza, the Spanish flu of 1918, mm -hmm. is still in the country, and it's still in the world. And we've known and we've learned how to cope with it. Mm -hmm. So we also need to see how we will cope with the coronavirus. And at that point, it means eventually we will have to open schools, but priority number one, it's not opening schools at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to sometime, yeah. look into what you're saying about government. Uh, uh, saving uh, using the uh, using them funds that was supposed to be in schools. One, mm -hmm. these schools have been struggling with these school fees. Mm -hmm. The government has not have money even to take to these schools to fund these schools for education. Mm -hmm. The government itself has been given money by the World Health Organization mm -hmm. for to manage this crisis mm -hmm. of uh, Corona. Mm -hmm. IMF has given out money billions of money 78 78 79 billion okay to the country okay so where are all these monies going one you had our health workers the other day saying they are going to strike okay which means they are not being uh, uh, they are not even getting whatever they're supposed to get because this they are working an extra mile remember other health services are not being catered for right now is Everything is corona, corona, corona. These other health services, the people with diabetes, people with other health, health uh, problems are not being looked into, are not being catered for, okay? So this is another problem that you are looking at. So the money that you've been given by the World Health Organization and uh, World Bank, these are money that are supposed to ensure that the health systems in this country are well, uh, are well managed, are well equipped, very soon, you will hear, and I've always said, we don't have m m medicine in our, in our hospitals. We don't have uh, enough personnel in our hospitals. So if we cannot work with these two things to ensure that there are enough health services, enough health personnel in our hospitals, then we are, lead, we are heading to a problem which we should manage ourselves. And it is up to ask. It is, it is our task, we people, okay? We need to come up, we need to rise and question everything that the government spends. Because if we don't question everything that the government spends, then 
the mandazis and the teas that they sit down to eat to spend millions on them, we will continue. We'll continue. And you won't question. Them. They'll come and tell you, oh, it taxes, oh, taxes, taxes. Then another thing, when we talk of, I, I support my brother when he said things should resume, okay, but under management. When you talk of reducing the taxes, fine, you've reduced the taxes. But remember, you've reduced the taxes to people who are not going to pay the taxes because there is no income. Ten people who, are, who earn 25,000 and one person who earns 100,000. Okay? So when these people uh, stop earning the 25,000, where are you going to, to, to get the taxes from? The 100,000 won't be able to manage the economy of this country. So we, this is something that we need to sit down and look into. We are talking of uh, uh, getting, uh, getting uh, uh, positions in government or making these and these and these and these political positions. But we are not looking at how we are going to drive our economy from these small scale workers. These are some of the things that we need to sit down and look into. How are you going to drive your economy from the SMEs? How are you going to drive your economy from this person who works from our, our hotel, who earns a uh, uh, thousand bob? How are you going to make uh, our economy drive eh, from this mamamboga who sells moga so that we, we are able to collect the, uh, the, 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 the turnover tax from him? or from her. So these are some of the things that we need to sit down and look into. Not only just come and tell uh, people, oh, we are this and this and this. We are already in a problem. All right. A very big problem that you need to manage. Okay. Now, um, um, we, we, we are running out of time now. If schools will be reopened any time from now, some of the institutions are being used as isolation centers. If these students, of course I know they will be fumigated and everything will be said about the readiness of the students occupying the classes. But how sure are we, students and people, when they learn the school was a, an isolation center, how will be their reaction? The other thing is, in case of a student who uh, is said to have uh, gotten coronavirus, how w is the management gonna deal with the mental wellness of stigmatization from these students because if small things make uh, these people cry, cry all day uh, they will always complain others will fear going to school they have been mocked how are we prepared to take care of our mental wellness of our kids when they go back to school yes hillary i think uh, if we really mean to contain coronavirus COVID-19, many things. Having the police now is a problem. <laughs> no, no, we don't know your man and your So, to go katika halingumu, mm -hmm. and we need to sober up first, sure. calm down, and then now restart uh, maybe from where we will have reached. Uh, Said as uh, uh, Job has mentioned something to do with panic, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he has uh, quoted that uh, alliance or its story. Now, if such a thing happened, uh, let me go to a primary because this is where we have um, uh, a, a big number of uh, pupils yes. in a class per table. In my time, I don't know whether things have changed. We used to surround a table, mm -hmm. and sitting on a bench from this side and this Very other true. side. Mm. Now, if one kid starts to sneeze, <laughs> I'm sure every other person will start sneezing Very and they start crying mm -hmm. they are sick mm -hmm. and they will cause kills in that school. Mm -hmm. How prepared he will, should be the management or this is another thing we should say, no going back to school until. Uh, this is another thing that we need to sit down and look into because one, we are going to have, when schools reopen right now, we are going to have school unrest, burning of schools, uh, destroying of properties in schools, we are going to see it as like a routine, okay? Because one, this student is going back to school to finish the syllabus and to sit for the exam. So this person is under pressure. And to run away from this pressure, let us strike. Let us cause trouble in school so that we are sent back home. Okay, because these are some of the things that we, we are going to see them happening. So the government or the ministry should be very cautious when it talks about the opening of schools. And you see, as I said earlier, these 
people have been at home for the first two weeks of the closure they were busy in books okay but right now there's no person who is in the book what are you reading okay what are you reading what are you preparing yourself for because one you also need a guidance from your teacher and this is where the digital platform could have helped us in one way or the other okay the laptops and whatever they say they want to bring to school if they could have done it then this we could have managed our situation okay because in our country let me say in africa we do we 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 we, we, we read to pass exams that is one mm -hmm. We read to, so that we, 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 get, we go to school so that we, we are able to go to the next level, okay? Because if I fail, I cannot go to the next level. Then I'm called a stupid person in the village. So these are some of the things that we need to look into. How are we going to change our education system? I was looking at the CBC thing and uh, trying to compare it to the past. There's no difference. It's just the same, same things, okay? Because... If these things are well managed, then we shall move in the best way. But if coronavirus is going to be managed the way CBC has been managed, then we are going to lose it. All right. Uh, Job, uh, your final comment. <coughs> well, my final comment is uh, an alive kid is better. An alive unschooled kid is better and means a lot than a dead educated kid. <laughs> We should not be so much into exams. We should not be so much into educating our children mm -hmm. because dead people mm -hmm. do not learn. Again, uh, I would like to encourage uh, the government and the Sara Ruto Committee to come up with measures to reopen schools, but not now. Let's take enough time. Yeah. We think about mass testing, improving the infrastructure in our schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we think about uh, maybe learning in shifts. Uh, getting PPEs for the children and the teachers, then benchmarking. Now we have to benchmark online. <laughs> we benchmark from the countries the that have tried it. Australia, mm -hmm. France, Denmark have tried. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Kenyans, the opinions they have about reopening of schools, we have up to until 22nd of this month to submit our views. Let Kenyans come up and submit their views. To see on the social media, sana bila kufikisha ako committee ya Sara. So let's, uh, each one of us support Dr. Sara so that at the end of the day, we will have contributed to the debate and the reopening of schools eventually, all of us. Yeah. All right. And to me, I think uh, the curfew thing, eh, it's a, it was a good idea. And I think... Uh, if I compare the, 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 the rate which in which we get information, uh, like let me say the cases in the U.S. are like 2 million. And the cases are, are something like above. Eh? The cases in Kenya are like 800. What if the curfew could have been used to test people from door to door? These are some of the things. Then we could have gotten good information. That, you could, that, that, that you could help us even in coming up with the reopening of schools. Because you could have known this area is the worst area. Okay? Even in Nairobi, we can tell this is the worst area. This is the worst area. But we, we see it is just coming out uh, generally. Mm -hmm. So by generalization of things, it makes people even not think correctly. Mm -hmm. So they could have used curfew in ensuring that when everybody is at home, no, let the, the doctors thing. go door to door. Let them, they could have used the resources that were, they were given to ensure that these doctors, mm -hmm. we, ha we have doctors, we have nurses, and those ones who are in school doing research and other things, mm -hmm. they could have taken all these people, okay. okay, to ensure that they go door to door so that we get credible information. Because the information you have right now is not credible. Okay. Okay? All right. We cannot rely on it. And as my friend said, uh, 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 an educated person who is alive is better than a, an, a, a dead person who is educated. True. The same goes to a, dead, a, a, a live dog is better than a dead lion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming and uh, sharing your views on whether we should be reopening the schools or not. So from what I'm gathering from here, 
we are not ready as a nation to reopen exactly. our we are not. schools. They have been my guest, Job Mogira, uh, research analyst and uh, Sarah Silito, a political analyst. I'll be coming up in a few minutes with an interview to demystify whether nicotine will help. The World Health Organization uh, refuted the claims that nicotine would help and of course you know the problems that are attached to tobacco uh, smoking or any form of uh, taking tobacco keep it y254 will be telling you that in a bit my name is Dereva Hillary good morning